just imagine. All of you. Just try to imagine that we have an endless source of energy, practically endless, and it is cheap, ultra cheap, or it might be even for free. What would you do with such an energy? What would you do with such a source of energy? I'm sure the people watching this from Southern California will probably think first to make drinking water from the vast Pacific Ocean, finally end this drought and the lack of water. It's a real problem out there. Many more people are sitting probably in Middle Eastern countries, Africa. They dream, they dream the same. To make drinking water, this must be Quite a challenge. We have the technologies today, but it costs energy to desalinate the water. What about Africa, large parts of Africa, highlands of South America? There are so many places, so big parts of this planet, we do not have at all any grid. These people will have finally a source an energy which they can power up their houses. Maybe finally enjoy the amenities and luxuries which we here think this is up to now. Of course, some people will completely waste energy if you give them endless and free energy. But I believe many more of us will use it to make their lives and also this planet a nicer and safer place. Is such a future possible? Is it at all dreamable? Yes, it is. I will show you in the next 15 minutes that such a dream is indeed possible and coming true. One day, and maybe that day is sooner than you think. There is an energy source out there which is practically endless for our time scales and which is completely free. And this is our sunshine. Ancient folks worshipped sun as a god. Many cultures still use sun as the biggest light. And many, many religions are based on the origin of sunshine. And indeed, this life on this planet is based on sunshine. Photosynthesis is the driving machine that I am here standing and talking to you because there is life on this planet. And even the oil and gas and coal that we are using today are nothing else than sunshine stored in chemical energy sunshine which was irradiating the earth several millions of years ago and transformed at that time by the plants of that time. So if you understand this logic, then the consequence should be why don't we use the sunshine irradiating today? What is it what we should look for? First, let us check the assumption if it's really endless. So, the numbers speak for themselves. The Earth receives, in every moment, a power of 170,000 terawatts. It's a large number. The total power which powers up the humanity today is just 17 terawatts. So by all means and all definitions of endlessness, solar energy is practically unlimited and endless for us. Now look to the assumption if it's available for everyone. 
If you look to this diagram, you will see most of the planet receives between, let's say, 800 and around 3,000 kilowatt hours per square meter per year energy from the sun. Admittedly, I mean, some parts of this planet receive more sunshine than the other parts, but there are no single spots, localized spots of energy, like, for example, in the oil. Oil today is produced in only a few number of countries, and even fewer number of international corporations control the oil. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is by no means a democratic energy. This is democratic energy supply. Everyone on this planet has the right and the access to sunshine. No one can forbid the other one to have a sunshine. No one can control the sunshine. So if you want to have a democratic future in any definition, in future for the energy supply, then we have to consider that we better get to the egalité for solar energy. So, can we utilize this sunshine? This is an important part. Yes, we can. You can see here an ad, a commercial ad from the year 1892. Did you know that? At the year of 1892 in Baltimore, United States, people were selling and installing solar water heaters. This technology is very well ripe. And my good friend and the author of the book, The History of Solar Energy, John Perlin, actually documented solar water heaters in Florida, which are still today working after 75 years of installation. The technology is there, so we just have to install it wherever hot water or warm water is needed. But in the last 60 years, there was another revolution. And that revolution is to transform solar energy directly into electrical energy. This is what we call photovoltaics. It's a fascinating machine. If you see a photovoltaics, this is no moving parts, no smoke coming out. There is no noise. Photovoltaic systems are solely based on quantum semiconductor physics and as such it's also completely contradicting to the first generation of industrial revolution engines which we are used today and as such they are environmentally benign and people for example watching this talk from big cities of mainland china they would probably love that property the most because most people living in these big cities in China are really suffering from heavy pollution, from problems with bread, and the fresh air is now very seldom there. So we have to admit that these photovoltaic panels were quite expensive. They were only affordable by NASA, as you can see, and today most of the satellites we have in the orbit are powered up by the solar panels. However, this is fortunately history. Today, you can buy a solar panel which converts energy, solar energy into electricity by one dollar per watt. And this is, as far as I know, the cheapest form the cheapest engine to convert any energy into anything. This very, very cheap price now makes it possible that indeed we can use it on Earth. But yet, the next revolution is to come. And this is to convert solar energy directly into chemical energy. Imagine a solar panel which doesn't give electricity or hot water, 
but which produces an artificial gasoline which you can tap in the evening and use it next day in your car. An artificial natural gas we call synthetic natural gas or any other chemical substance like methanol. These technologies we call as artificial photosynthetic technologies. And it works, we know it from the living planet, but the living planet photosynthesis 3.5 billion years. And I don't want to wait so long for this dream to come true. So we have to work in different systems. There are indeed possibilities today we can use in a very different way, for example, CO2 and take renewable energies and convert them into artificial gasoline, artificial fuel for powering up many, many generations to come. Well, we are working on it and first results are already in the market. Today, these technologies are called solar fuel technologies, power to gas technologies, and they are already in prototyping and also in commercial sense available. Did you know that? It is not a dream anymore. It is already technology. So, it has two distinct advantages if we do this CO2 recycling. Because if we would have any future on this planet at all, we should better use CO2 in a cyclic way instead of accumulating it into the atmosphere, which will cause severe problems. Another side effect of such technologies is, of course, to make the energy of the sun storable, transportable, so that we can supply the energy maybe later on, maybe in the evening, where the sun is not there. So this kind of storage is a big problem, and this ANZAT can definitely give a solution to that. So, last but not least, we have to consider the important message if it is cheap, if, if it's affordable, if it's for free. This is an important issue, and as probably known to everyone, God will not send you an invoice or bill for the sunshine. That means the operational cost will be limited to the maintenance, and therefore, first of all, negligible in the scale of a big power plant. Second is the investment cost. And I already told you the number. We need, let's say, around 20 terawatts to power up the humanity today, total power up. If we calculate one dollar per watt, we end up in 20 trillion dollars. Hmm? What? You think it's too expensive? You think we cannot afford that? God's sake, we just spent, the US taxpayers just spent over three trillion dollars for the war in Iraq. Any calculation, any estimation of the 2008 financial crisis to the developed countries orders up much more than that. The cumulative public debt of the developed countries in OECD are a multiple of that number, 20 trillion. So don't come to me and say we cannot afford this as a human mankind. It's indeed with today's 0% interest rate for the European Central Bank or US Federal, Ex Federal Reserve, this is even payback times with the today's energy prices maximum on the order of 20 years. Then, after then, if the investment is paid back, the solar energy is free. So, in that sense, we can also show that such a solar Marshall plan will empower, of course, our technologies and the way we are thinking, etc. 
So finally, I want to tell, finally, this is indeed my dream. I have a dream that one day this humanity will utilize the sunshine to power up in a clean and affordable and free way its civilization. And until that day, we scientists will work hard. And you all out there, go out and spread the word what you have just heard. Thank you.